So here we go with a special St. Patrick's Day show spectacular. Spectacular in a few ways because it's touching on many themes. The player I'm talking about today put himself in the MLB record books. He did that on opening day. He also has a great story about his final home run in the big show. And what better way to start this show on this day, St. Patrick's Day, than to celebrate with a good old Irish gentleman. And it doesn't get more Irish than... James Thomas Maloney, nicknamed Mo, shortstop, pinch runner, MLB debut 1959 from Inglewood, New Jersey. Born May 26, 1934. You know when I give an exact date, it means something special happened. In the case of today's show, I'm happy to point out this date. Mr. Jim Mahoney will be celebrating a birthday soon. We wish him well on his upcoming 90th. So let's go. Not to Jim's birthday party. From what I hear, he is a very private person, so I wouldn't expect to get invited, and I would hate to intrude. I get it. I'm the same way. Jim Mahoney's playing career spanned three decades, and then he coached or managed off and on for another two. You think someone who's been around baseball that long would have some stories? Nope, not really. I read that folks have reached out to him, but to no avail. Since you probably won't talk about it yourself, I will, because that's what I do on this show, talk about players and their stories. I will tell everybody about how you got your name in the MLB record book and your exceptional at-bat in 1962. These must be such nice memories for you and real cool baseball stories for us. So here we go, quick and dirty. Jim Mahoney played pro ball for nearly 20 years, four years in the bigs with four teams. He was signed as a pitcher by the Phillies before the start of the 53 season and played for the Bradford team in the Pony League. Two months later, he was a Red Sox and put on their Class D team, the Salisbury Rocots, Tar Heel League. As a pitcher, Jim hit better than he pitched, so he was turned into a shortstop. Spent 1954 with the Bluefield Blue Grays of the Appalachian League. Not only a good hitter, but in 1955, led the California League in field percentage for a shortstop while playing for the San Jose Red Sox, Class C. Jim played in 156 games for the San Francisco Seals in 1956. Drafted into the military, Mr. Mahoney would miss the 1957 and 58 seasons while serving. He would return just in time for Boston Red Sox 1959 spring training camp. That's when my dad saw you play in Scottsdale and he, he got your autograph. He also saw you play in 1956 when you were a Seal. A few times. When the Sox broke camp in 59... Jim was sent down to the Sox affiliate, the Minneapolis Millers, along with Ted Wills and future footnote, Pumpsy Green, the first black Red Sox player. Jim Mahoney would make his MLB debut in 1959 with the Red Sox. This is the year he got his first homer. But he would spend all of 1960 with the Millers, but would be the 13th overall pick in the 1960 expansion draft by the LA Angels, <laughs> but was traded minutes later to the Washington Senators, another expansion team. A nice career highlight for Jim was on MLB's opening day, April 10th, 1961, when you became the first player to appear as a pinch runner in modern Senators history. That's one way to get into the record book. Traded to Cleveland Indians in 1962, he spent all but a few games with them. One game in particular was significant, not only because it was your last big league homer, but it was who and how you got that homer that made it special. After years of years of traveling and over a thousand games under his belt, he would retire after the 1970s season and could loosen that belt when Jim became a big league coach for the Chicago White Sox in the mid-70s and then for the Seattle Mariners in the mid-80s. During his coaching tenure, he also managed the farm systems for the White Sox, the Pirates, and the Twins. Okay, now we'll, I will get to Jim Mahoney's fourth and final big league home run on this day, June 17th, 1962. It's Sunday, and there just happens to be the largest crowd gathered at Cleveland Stadium since 1954. Just under 71,000 fans are there. Why is that? Well, I should first say... It's a doubleheader, 
it's Father's Day, there's a giveaway, and the Indians are in first place. All decent reasons for the big crowd, but that's not the reason. Sorry, I should first say. The team they are playing are the reigning champs. The New York Yankees are in town, and of course they bring Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris, two of the greatest home run hitters of the era, but that isn't the reason either. Why, the park is packed. Heck, the Yankees are in town all the time. This is what I should first say. The reason there were so many fans at that game that day was because the Indians had the chance to sweep the Yankees in a four-game series for the first time since World War II. I guess that's really what I should have first said. So now we know why the park is filled. So it's the first game of a doubleheader. We're in the second inning. Yankees starting pitcher Bill Stafford just gave up back-to-back home runs, and he's mad. Who's he going to take it out on? Of course, whoever comes up to the plate next, which happened to be the man of the moment, Jim Mahoney. And yes, Bill Stafford took out his anger by dropping Jim to the dirt on the first pitch. Jim gets up, dusts himself off, and gets back into the box and waits for the next pitch. Here it comes, right at Jim. And again, he has to hit the deck. Now Jim has to get up for the second time in two pitches, dusts himself off again, By now, his uniform is a different color. So he steps back up to the plate for the third time. Who's more mad now? Jim and Bill look at each other. Here comes the pitch. Where does the ball go? Of course, right at Jim Mahoney, who hit that dirty ball into the left field seats for his last big league home run of his career. And by doing that, he helped the Cleveland Indians complete that four-game sweep of the Yankees. First time since World War II. On this day, St. Patrick's Day. Yes, St. Patrick's Day. Note the block of wood I still use to hold my camera. Of course, I'm not using it right now. Peace.